Hey guys, welcome back to another video here on the channel. This week, Volvo sent me the XC60 Recharge here on the channel. And I have to say the recharge or the plug-in hybrid of this vehicle is certainly a huge pro or uh, you know aspect of it as to why I would purchase an XC60. So under the hood of the XC60 or most of the plug-in hybrid recharge models from Volvo, you'll find the T8 powertrain, which combines a two liter turbocharged four cylinder and eight speed automatic at the front axle to an electric motor at the back for a combined system output of 455 horsepower and 523 pound feet of torque. Now, uh, the combination and you know the way that Volvo has electrified this powertrain is quite amazing. And uh, for being a plug-in hybrid and you know just a luxury vehicle in general, this vehicle certainly scoots and uh, books without any issues. It's certainly one of the reasons and highlights of this vehicle as to why I would want to purchase one uh, myself because. It is extremely smooth, extremely refined, uh, has a ton of power when you combine that electric motor at the rear axle, which by itself is, has substantial output at 145 horsepower and about 228 pound-feet of torque to that two liter turbocharge at the front end. And uh, everything just works extremely well in the way Volvo has tuned uh, the hybrid system in this vehicle. So now for the rest of this drive, we'll go ahead and put it back in the normal hybrid powertrain drive mode, uh, which obviously prioritizes more efficiency rather than the overall performance. Now this week with the Volvo XC60, I've actually got to experience a lot of different situations and scenarios when it comes to driving this car and using it in totally different environments. Now, right when it was dropped off, it was dropped off with 0% according to the uh, range indicator on the dashboard, which is totally fine no big deal uh, but i was actually able to take it on about a 200 mile road trip immediately upon receiving the vehicle uh, so i kind of got an idea of how it feels on the interstate use some of the driver assistance technology to see what the fuel economy is uh, you know driving it without any you know main uh, source of battery and it actually got you know about 24 and a half to 25 mpg at about 75 miles an hour so not the best obviously but not the worst either kind of to be expected now, during this week, I've also got to do an EV range test. So driving this vehicle fully charged, seeing exactly how far it would go, uh, you know, from 100% all the way until the engine kicks on. And we actually got some very impressive results. Now, I don't want to spoil it too much, so make sure you guys check out the dedicated video I have here on the channel where I go over that in much more detail. And then finally, the last part of the week, I've kind of just been driving it around uh, you know, kind of having a little bit of state of charge on the battery, depending on if I plug it in on my 120 volt outlet at the house. Uh, but most of the time, it's just kind of been running in the normal, regular hybrid drive mode. Although you can stay, uh, change the drive mode here to actually charge the battery, hold it, or use the auto setting. I've kind of been alternating between the auto and charge setting. Uh, but nonetheless, you know, it's been great to drive around even with no, uh, no additional state of charge on the battery for EV only range. I think the Volvo does a great job using the reserve and, you know, operating in a normal traditional hybrid drive mode. Although if you're spending the additional money on this vehicle, you certainly do want to use the plug-in hybrid aspect as much as possible to get the additional range, the fuel economy, and, you know, all the true benefits that you're getting with the recharge platform. Uh, in that high voltage battery system and of course the motor out back. So I've had a good, you know, wide ranging experience and variety of driving scenarios with this Volvo, uh, which has kind of, you know, brought out a lot of the positives of this vehicle, but there has been one big negative, which you guys might've saw at the beginning of this video. And if you are familiar with Volvos in general, uh, then you might know exactly what I'm referring to, but we will touch on that a little bit later in this video. Now, anyways, uh, just starting out with the, the usable suspects, uh, visibility, ergonomics, overall usability. I think the XC60 uh, overall is, you know, thoroughly gone through, very thoughtful, and you know, very meticulous in how they designed and engineered this vehicle. Now, visibility is absolutely phenomenal. The hood slopes down just a little bit, even with the seat in one of its lower positions. Of course, you have door mounted mirrors, which helps with side visibility. And then out the back, that is a really positive aspect of the Volvo. Now, this one does not have the optional digital rear camera mirror. 
uh, but the opening for the rear glass and you know the overall size of it is huge so when you fold down these second row headrests you have t uh, you know total full visibility out the back and then looking over your shoulder to the c pillar area there's a huge piece of glass back there as well in the cargo area that is also going to be heated uh, which is awesome to see so snow and ice doesn't build up on that piece of glass uh, but really driving this vehicle it has to be one of the best and easiest vehicles to see out of in this kind of compact luxury segment of SUV. So if you're one a vehicle that's kind of just easy to get around, easy to drive with, and has you know very good visibility, uh, the Volvo XC60 is certainly one of those vehicles. Now, when it comes to how the vehicle drives, well, we're coming up here on my bumpy section of roadway, but the vehicle I'm currently driving is an ultimate trim level for 2024. It did get renamed to Ultra for 2025, but there's really no major difference between the two vehicles outside of that trim level rename. But this one does have the 22 inch alloy wheels, the adaptive air suspension, uh, has the cold weather package and the uh, you know Bowers and Wilkins uh, premium upgraded sound system over that of the standard Harman Kardon that comes on this trim level. And overall, the comfort and you know how this vehicle drives with the suspension and you know this powertrain is just fantastic. Now, as you can see, we are traveling over this bumpy section of road. And even with the 35 series sidewall tires on these 22 inch wheels, the air suspension does a fantastic job of absorbing the bumps and maintaining a good level of control uh, with the body and everything like that. So, um, you know, I would say if you're looking at a Volvo uh, XC60, you know, I would pick all the options that this particular one does have. Uh, now, I will say I haven't driven one with the coil suspension, but I would think it's still going to be very well controlled, very well damped. Uh, but I think the air suspension just takes it up one level further, uh, given it is going to be tied into the different drive modes that are going to be available uh, with this vehicle. So, you know, each drive mode has a different suspension setting for the air suspension. Of course, it will tweak some of the steering, uh, the other aspects, including throttle response, the EV powertrain. Everything like that is going to be tied into those dry modes. And I think the air suspension and just everything like that takes it one step further. Now, as you can see, we are driving here at 30 miles an hour. The vehicle is in electric only mode, indicated by a little kind of uh, water droplet or energy icon on the tachometer on the right side of the dashboard. Essentially, we have zero miles indicated on the high voltage battery system but it does leave a fairly large reserve in the pack. I believe just over three kilowatt hours uh, is not usable via the plug-in hybrid powertrain so that the vehicle can operate in a standard hybrid fashion to get you a little bit of additional fuel efficiency and economy over that of a standard internal combustion platform vehicle. So even though we haven't charged the battery on you know, a wall outlet, we are still using electric only mode here at 32 miles an hour. Uh, which like I said, is just one of the biggest main advantages going with the Recharge T8 powertrain over that of the mild hybrid system, which is also available in this particular model of vehicle. Of course, that one will come in at a less expensive price point. But touching on some of the other aspects about this vehicle, including the interior materials and just the overall, you know, fit and finish and build quality. Well, I don't have a lot of experience with recent Volvo products in general, but I think this is a clear standout uh, aspect of this vehicle. Everything is put together extremely well. There has not been any major squeaks, rattles, anything like that. There's just one small uh, vibration in the passenger side door panel when certain base frequencies are hit via the Bowers and Wilkins stereo system at higher volumes in particular, but I'm sure that could be sorted fairly easily um, and that is really no big deal. But outside of that, the platform and the chassis and just the fit and finish of everything on the interior has been phenomenal. Now, if you guys haven't seen already, the overall spec of this vehicle does have the optional no charge wool interior seats uh, instead of the standard Napa leather. Now, a couple of different things come with the wool interior if you do select it. Number one, you lose the ventilated seat functionality that comes automatically with the Napa leather. You also lose the adjustable side bolsters that come with the Napa leather on this particular trim. And then you also lose the optional and available massaging front seat feature that you can get in addition to that of the ultimate trim with the standard Napa leather. Again, if you choose the cloth wool option. Now uh, here wearing shorts in this particular video, I kind of wanted to you know, mention the comfort aspect 
Because these seats are a great option, I applaud Volvo for offering them in a vehicle like this because there are people out there that don't want Napa leather for a variety of reasons, whether that be, you know, uh, environmental reasons, comfort reasons. The reasons can be, you know, obviously comes down to personal preference. But I will say with the wool interior, particularly against bare skin, it does get a little irritable or can irritate the skin just a little bit, uh, you know, in terms of this material. It's not harsh or, you know, hard by any means, but it is just something to consider if you frequently wear shorts, uh, you know, have bare skin contacting the materials that, you know, it may be something that you do want to consider. Now, also with this seat, uh, with my experience with these seats, uh, the fact that it does not have the ventilated feature is sort of a big deal in my opinion because the back portion of the seat can get warm especially here in summer months when it's you know in the upper 80s near 90 degrees outside uh, for example when i took that 200 mile road trip it was like 90 degrees outside that day and uh, my back did start to sweat just a little bit so not having the ventilated seats in a luxury vehicle like this is a little bit of a bummer and certainly is going to be a trade-off so do consider that when you're choosing the wool interior option on this vehicle uh, with those trade-offs that you are making now here we are getting ready to turn onto the interstate and test out and talk about some of the driver assistance technologies now this vehicle does have the pilot assist which is a hands-on driver assist systems for you know mainly out on the highway but there are other roadways which it will uh, be compatible with but acceleration and overall handling is just fantastic even not in the power mode or the sport drive mode with this vehicle but we are oh man we are already up over the speed limit without any issues and that was like 25 percent throttle at most now activating cruise control in the pilot assist is very easy inside this vehicle simply press on the left side of the steering wheel it goes to your current set speed and then one thing that i found interesting about volvos is the increment adjustments for the speed limit as well as changing between pilot assist and just adaptive cruise control without the lane centering technology so one press on the up arrow for the volvo system in increases the set speed by five miles an hour which is not like that of most of the vehicles out there uh, but I actually kind of prefer this method because it's easy to increase speed increments by a lot. Say when you're passing another vehicle or just, you know, want to increase your speed uh, because there's changes in the speed limit zones on the particular road you're driving on. But if you do want to increase it by one mile an hour increments, you simply press and hold for about two seconds and then release. And that gives you a one mile an hour increase over that of your current set speed. Now, another aspect about the uh, pilot assist or the cruise control technology that I like is that pressing the left arrow, or excuse me, the right arrow on the left side of the steering wheel changes it between the lane centering and adaptive cruise control to just adaptive cruise control via the little icon on the digital cluster. So the little car icon is only adaptive cruise control and then pressing the arrow toggles it back and forth. So those two little uh, differences and you know, uh, tuning that Volvo has in implemented with their driver assistance, I think is unique from most of the other vehicles out uh, you know, currently on the road and I think just make it a little bit uh, easier to use when you're driving on the interstate or taking those long distance road trips. Now here we are going around the tight section of road. I did go ahead and put it in the power drive mode and it is just incredible what the air suspension and the adaptive, you know, uh, modes can do with this vehicle. It stiffened up the air suspension so there was nowhere near the same amount of body lean if you're in say the regular hybrid drive mode and handling on this vehicle is downright very, very good for a compact luxury SUV. So now as we start to finish up and round out this video, the one item that I did wanna mention that was fairly concerning, and I did a little bit of Googling online that other owners have experienced over the last couple model years of vehicles as well, is the infotainment system and the sound system not uh, producing any sound whatsoever. So essentially, uh, going silent and you know not functioning at all. Now, I experienced this issue three separate times in this vehicle over the last uh, two days in this particular one. And overall, what happens and what my experience was with this vehicle is that I'll just be driving along playing uh, Bluetooth streaming from Pandora or whatever other music source that is playing. 
and there's a very sharp uh, popping static type of sound that comes from the speakers, which I actually did capture on video. So I'll go ahead and insert that now. Okay, so I just had the sound cut out on me for a second time here over my week with the XC60. And I kind of wanted to just test which sounds are no longer available to the driver if you do have this issue on your vehicle uh, because of the amplifier or whatever is causing this issue through the infotainment system. So obviously we don't have any audio uh, through any source on the infotainment system. We don't have the turn signals, which I've already mentioned, so you lose that clicking that happens when you know the turn signal is obviously flashing and turned on but you also lose the chime for the safety system such as the seat belt indicator while you're driving without your seat belt that no longer alerts you via a tone and i would have to assume that you know some of the other aspects about this vehicle you know such as the power lift gate no longer sounds a, a chime uh, with this issue and i would have to assume that a lot of the Oh my gosh. Well, there was the sound firsthand for you guys. I'm glad I caught that on camera because, oh man, that is such an ear piercing sound that it is horrendous to hear inside of the vehicle. But that is exactly the sound I got the other day with the Volvo XC60. And as you can see, that is the same sound now. That did not fix whatever uh, issue is going on here inside of the vehicle. That essentially comes through the speakers and everything in terms of the audio system, the streaming, even the turn signal indication noise, as well as some of the other driver alert notification noises from the digital cluster, uh, essentially no longer work at all. So uh, at that point, you're in a silent mode and really none of the you know major sounds in the stereo system, everything just no longer works at that point. Now, I actually tried doing the reboot, reboot via the infotainment system button here, which essentially restarts the infotainment. And according to people online, that fixed the issue. However, when I did it, it did not fix my issue. And uh, until this morning, until I set, let the car sit overnight, did it uh, result in a fix where I've let it sit for a couple hours and it actually did not go away. So I'm not exactly sure what the root cause of that issue is, but Simply rebooting the infotainment system in my situation did not fix the issue, but letting the car sit overnight did fix the issue. So um, based on what I saw online and my experience with this vehicle, that is a somewhat concerning issue given the fact that the infotainment system and some of those you know, sounds through the speaker or the stereo system uh, do have a lot of uh, you know, uh, you know, influence on your daily usability of this vehicle. Now, luckily, the turn signals still light up on the outside of the vehicle despite there being no noise on the instrument cluster. Some people reported that HVAC controls even go out when the sound issue happens, so you can no longer control uh, the climate controls, which are only controlled here on the infotainment system. So with all that being said, it is a fairly concerning issue to be having inside this vehicle, and hopefully it's something that can be resolved all via over the air software updates and speaking of those updates i even went into the uh, update history on this particular vehicle uh, which you can see all of the release notes which is awesome and it said in one of the updates that they fixed the you know sound issues that i was kind of describing earlier on in this video and unfortunately i'm clearly still having an issue several updates later after they implemented that supposed fix via over the air updates so just keep that in mind if you're looking at one of these vehicles is that certainly uh, certain aspects of the technology are not going to be you know uh, fully fixed and there are still going to be some bugs from time to time but outside of that that was the only major you know uh, concern that came up over my last week with this vehicle and outside of that i've absolutely enjoyed the xc60 and driving it on a daily basis the t8 plug-in hybrid powertrain is absolutely phenomenal uh, you know, the build quality, the ride quality, the overall ergonomics on the interior, all of the features and amenities, especially if you get the Napa leather seating surfaces, are all there for a vehicle, you know, in this rough price point and category of luxury compact SUV. So if you're considering the XC60 or any of the other Volvo recharge plug-in uh, vehicles, I would highly recommend it. Uh, I think, you know, hopefully they can sort out the, you know, sound issues and overall infotainment bugs that I was mentioning a minute ago. 
Um, but that was really the only big concern that I had with this particular vehicle. So overall, uh, that is going to do it for this video. Uh, I want to give a huge thanks to Volvo for sending out the XC60 recharge for me to test and review for a week. Hopefully, uh, we can get some other Volvos here on the channel and you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know if you guys have any questions or comments down in the comment section below and I will do my best to answer them and of course direct you to the place where you can find an answer to your question. Um, but let me know your thoughts and comments on the T8 powertrain from Volvo or the XC60 in general. Uh, would you purchase one for the mid $70,000 price point which this vehicle comes in at? Or is there another vehicle of a similar nature that you would uh, rather have for the money? I'm definitely curious about that. I like the way Volvo has implemented the T8 with the electric motor at the rear axle, the uh, ICE powertrain at the front end, and the overall smoothness and you know driving dynamics that, that nets you uh, because of the divorced electric powertrain from that of the internal combustion engine, where other manufacturers out there are, are of course putting the electric motor towards the front of the vehicle, which does interact with you know the ICE powertrain a little bit more than here in this particular one. But overall, like I said, a great vehicle, thoroughly enjoyed it, has fantastic styling and uh, drives absolutely phenomenal, even if you don't plug the vehicle in on a daily basis. So with all that being said, I appreciate continued support here on the channel. Hit that like button if you guys enjoyed it. Subscribe if you haven't already. And with all that being said, I'll see you guys in the next one.